Okay, you should be seeing my slides now. There we go. Um, so, hello everybody. My name is uh, Svetomir Miosov, as mentioned, but most people just call me Leo uh, because it's shorter and easier to pronounce. Um, as Nikki said, I've been doing uh, programming for over 10 years. I started as a freelancer. I've done a lot of work for different clients on quite a number of different programming languages. And uh, as a result, I founded my own company and now I can enjoy doing everything. A little bit of coding, a little bit of managing, a little bit of teaching. Um, also on the screen right now, you can see my email address, which you can use to contact me eventually if you uh, have any kinds of questions, uh, etc. Uh, so that's about the boring part. Uh, about the course, we're going to start, it says HTML and JavaScript in the title, but we are also going to touch on some other topics like CSS. And let's hope time permits, we have more time for something like Vue.js, React, and um, let's say Angular. So we're going to start very simple because this is introduction course. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to explore what HTML and CSS are. This is actually the language that you see in the browser. This is how um, an application communicates with the browser and allows you to see stuff on your screen. And then this is not going to take a lot of time because it's a relatively simple material, even if you didn't have any previous experience, which is not a requirement for uh, this course. And then we're going to do a deeper dive into JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript is a language that uh, works also in your browser on top of the HTML and the CSS and allows you to do a lot of uh, cool, cool stuff that we're going to talk about more in the presentation later. We are then going to prepare for a certificate that you're going to have a, an exam, exam for. Uh, and uh, as long as we have enough time, we can have uh, even some more interesting topics like uh, frameworks, uh, UGS, et cetera. So uh, without further ado, let's just talk why you should take this course, because this presentation is going to be a very high level overview of what this course represents and why you should be interested in it. As I said, introduction course, which doesn't mean that you cannot take it if you don't have any previous experience, but uh, even if you haven't done any kind of programming so far, um, that's nothing to bother you about because we're going to start from uh, scratch. Uh, but before you do that, I'll show you um, this picture, I wouldn't say it's a complicated or a, a, an easy to understand picture, but when we have an application in the web, on the internet, uh, the application is usually divided on several, several different parts. So on the right hand side here, you can see the user, which is uh, us, uh, and we could be using the web browser, we can be using a mobile application, it could be something else. There are other kinds of users as well, which consume APIs or uh, just crunch data. Um, the web and the mobile, we call something uh, like front end, which is uh, the tool that's used to visualize the application. So whatever we want to do with the application, whether it's a news application, a news website, or a site with pictures, or a site that uh, represents data, etc., cetera, um, there, there needs to be a way for the user to interact with this application. And that part is called the front end. For you, you can imagine that the front end is uh, let's say today we're sitting on a computer, maybe on a phone, and what we see is the browser. So the browser could be the front end and the browser needs a way to communicate with the core of the app, uh, the so-called backend, which contains the business logic of the app, which contains all the functions, all the processes that are available for the user to interact. And the backend could be a very, very huge uh, part of the application that uses all kinds of different technologies. Um, it usually has a database, which is a place where we store the data, let's say your user accounts or something like that, as long as the, the business logic. And um, uh, it's not a scope of this course. Uh, if you take, for example, the PHP course, that could be more focused on the backend. Uh, but for the purposes of this course, we can say, okay, the backend is there. It's providing us information. It's, it knows how the application works. It saves the data, it processes the data, et cetera. How does it do it? Um, let's say it's kind of like a black, bo black box right now, although we're going to mention things like a server and we're going to explain what server is and what it does. Um, but the green box on the right hand side of the screen right now, uh, this is what we call the front end and the technologies here are also vast, but you're almost always guaranteed that you're going to have HTML, CSS and JavaScript working, whether if it's a mobile application, web application and, and so forth. 
Uh, you could have more, but this is the core, this is the base. So if you know those three things, I'm not saying that you're going to be uh, ready to go out and program, etc. cetera. Uh, you probably, you will need to learn more stuff. And in the IT sector, that's, um, that's actually a given because um, it, it's so dynamically changing that there's something new to learn every day. But this is a very good base for you to start your journey into the IT world and uh, to start programming, to start developing. And eventually it could be the uh, starting point that is going to show you all the rest of the components of an application. And from there you can decide, okay, maybe I like the backend better, maybe I like the database better, maybe I like to be a designer and just, uh, which is also included into the front end um, and just do something like that. There's stuff like um, uh, user experience, user interfaces, etc. So this is the big picture. And as I said, we're going to dive into the green part today, just briefly mentioning other of the elements that you see on the screen. So let's start with the HTML, which was the first part of the title of this course. Um, the HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Do you need to remember that? I don't think so, although it could be actually a question on an exam or something. What you need to know, though, is that this is a markup language which is used to create web pages. And basically, it describes what a web page contains. It's the structure of the web, web page. Um, imagine it says, okay, we have a title here, we have a paragraph here, we have a picture here, something like that. Um, so you, you combine a bunch of uh, elements in the HTML, and then the browser knows how to read these elements and display them to the customer. So in other words, what you need to remember is that uh, HTML is the language that the browser needs to, um, uh, that the browser understands and needs to display the content and the information on your screen. So how does the HTML look like? Of course, uh, as I said, this is introduction, we're going to have a much deeper dive into the HTML, but uh, this is a very short HTML document that you see a code of the HTML document you see on your screen. And those things that you see here are, um, let me see if I can draw something for you. So this here is called an element or a tag. And if you look closely, you'll see that most of the elements have a closing element, which has the same title, in this case, HTML, but has this little um, slash, which means this is the closing tag. So in between those two, we have whatever that HTML tag has, and this is the body, the, the meat of the HTML document. So as you can see, you can have a different, uh, all kinds of different uh, elements. You can have the title of the page, which is actually what shows up on top of your browser uh, in the tabs. Uh, you can have something like P, which stands for paragraph. You can have an H1, which is a heading, and the, the number annotates how large this heading should be on the screen, et cetera. There's much more elements. Uh, there's tables, which could have rows, cells, et cetera. As I said, there's images, um, et cetera. Uh, it's, there's a lot of elements, nothing to be um, afraid of. But as I said, um, this is something that the browser understands. And if you can create something like that, then the browser can display it. And we'll talk about how the user can view it later and how do you uh, communicate this information back to them. Uh, so this is how the HTML looks like. And something that is very closely tied to the HTML is uh, called CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And what we said is the HTML is the structure. So it annotates what needs to be on the page, what's displayed on the page. And the cascading style sheets, the CSS, actually annotates how it should be displayed. So let's say you have uh, a title or a table, but you want to have a different color for the letters that are part of this, uh, this title. The CSS are the rules that say, OK, you can have this title, but you can make the color green. Or you can change the font of the title to have some uh, more interesting uh, letters, et cetera. Uh, the CSS itself presents a file with a bunch of rules. And the cool thing about that is that the rules could be applied across multiple web pages, across uh, multiple elements with the same name, et cetera. So the idea here is you define a rule and say, OK, if you see that title uh, somewhere, make sure it's displayed the same way across all the pages and uh, on the application, whatever you see it. The other big benefit of CSS is that it could also provide rules which will allow you to, to um, style the elements differently in case they're displayed on a phone or in, in case they're displayed on uh, the browser or if you want to print them and they, uh, they're going to go on a paper, etc. 
So uh, that allows you to create one piece of code of the HTML and then style it differently in case it's displayed on different types of, of screens or even different types of uh, devices. Very brief overview of how CSS code looks like. It's uh, a bit different uh, than the, the HTML, but as you can see here, we have um, something that's uh, called, uh, actually this are the same uh, element tags that the HTML had. So we had the H1, we had the, the P, we had the body. So here we are saying, whenever you see a paragraph, we want you to use this font, Verdana, font family means Verdana, and we want to have it as this size. Um, in the headings, we want, as I said, we want to change the color and we want to align the text in the center of the screen and so forth and so forth. In the, in the body, we're changing the background. And of course, same as the HTML, there are so many rules and so many different things that you can do with the CSS that uh, you can create some beautiful stuff that's displayed on the screen. Um, the next slide shows a very brief uh, example of how you can have different headings or let's say a menu on the left side, uh, left hand side of the screen, uh, some information bar on the right, and you see they have different sizes, they have different um, colors, background colors, etc. And CSS is allowing you to do all of that. So um, I guess this looks cool so far, but if you think about it, everything that we did so far presents static content, right? So uh, we know what the, um, the content is, we know where it wants to go, and there's no way for us to uh, change something on the screen if we want to uh, do that. And actually, let me take a step back. So if we want to change something on the screen, uh, that part that we saw on the, that um, image that we saw in the beginning with the whole application overview, uh, then we would probably have to do a request to the application or the server, which has the database and the uh, backend, uh, the business logic that knows how the application works. So we might have to make a request to the server, request that additional information or that change that we want to see on the screen, and then reload everything in the browser. And I'm sure this is experience that many of you have seen. So when you click a button somewhere, the whole screen blinks, uh, there's a waiting or a status bar that fills up, and then we display the new page. So um, what if we want to make the user experience smoother and uh, don't have this loading times, stay on the same screen and basically everything is seamlessly updated without the user noticing the loading times. So this is where the JavaScript kicks in. We're still in the browser, we're still um, on the front end, but the JavaScript is something that works, uh, let's say on top of the HTML and the CSS or separately from them, but still in the browser and it allows you to change the content dynamically. That means that you can change, let's say you have a title which says hello, and then you log in. And we don't want to say just hello anymore. We want to say hello uh, Svetlio or hello whoever your, whatever your name is, right? So instead of reloading the whole page, we can just use JavaScript to get that HTML content and add your name or change the content uh, on, on the way that you, you wanted to do it. Some of the other things that you can do is you can change the CSS. For example, we've seen many examples on when you have a button or a link, and when you hover over with the mouse on that button link, um, it changes. The color changes, or it like kind of pop ups of the screen. There's some kind of anim animation or something. This is also JavaScript playing on top of the CSS and changing those CSS rules that you saw earlier in the CSS file. You can even change the HTML structure itself. So uh, from one side, we have the content, but let's say you want to add some new titles, some new paragraphs, some new buttons, etc. Uh, for example, when you have the menus, you have a login button, right? And when you log in uh, in the application, you want to see a logout button, the same name, or maybe you have logout and your name in parentheses. So here we're removing elements from the HTML and adding new ones directly so uh, we can interact with them later. And all of that happens in your browser. So um, the JavaScript works uh, without the need to actually communicate with the server. It could do that. You can send a request to the server from JavaScript and process the results from there, but you don't have to, you, you're not obliged to do it. So uh, what JavaScript gives us here is a layer in the application that allows us to seamlessly communicate with the backend and change stuff uh, in the browser without the user actually noticing that. 
there's a lot more that you can do with JavaScript. Um, as I said, there's a different kinds of uh, animations, trans transitions. Uh, we're going to talk about something, that's, let's say, uh, it's called two-way bindings. Um, we didn't mention it, but you can have a form in your application. So you want to register, you have to fill in your email address, you have to fill in your password, etc. Uh, and you have those input fields on the page. So those are fields that you can interact with, right? You can type something in and um, send it to the server for processing. So uh, every time you submit, you have to send that information to the server. And we have this uh, revolt of the screen that we mentioned. and that not so pleasant user experience. Uh, what you can do with JavaScript is you can actually send the form um, to the server without reloading the screen and then update information uh, dynamically when the server sends back a response. This is called two-way binding and we're going to have a concrete thing, example when we start working with some actual code uh, to show you how troublesome could be to actually have variables that communicate with the server. They take data from there and then display it on the screen. But then if the users changes something, they have to send that data back to, um, to the server. That used to be a huge problem back in the days, but now we have uh, technologies that allows us to do that uh, almost automatically. Uh, something else <clears throat> that's um, a big plus from uh, for JavaScript has been around for a very long time. So. Um, first, there's a huge community, very good documentation, a lot of helpful resources that you can use if you want to work with uh, JavaScript. But also, there are a lot of uh, libraries, third-party libraries that are out there and that they're ready and you can use out of the box. I'm pretty sure that you've seen those uh, drop-down menus, which um, we all know what drop-down menus. So you have the button, you click, and there's like several options that you can choose from. But we've seen some um, more advanced, more modern technologies that, for example, have a search bar inside of the dropdown, which lets you type something in and find a specific result from the list if the list is uh, is too long, right? So this is, in most cases, JavaScript working on top of the regular HTML and CSS elements. And uh, you can actually take the select to library, which is a very popular JavaScript library, and use it out of the box, which is exactly that. It provides you that drop down with the search box, et cetera. But uh, that's not something that you have to code anymore these days. You can just uh, use it uh, plug and play, basically using the library. Uh, there are numerous libraries that you can use. Uh, jQuery is basically almost uh, something like a framework for JavaScript, which uh, allows you to simplify the syntax and provides a lot of functions uh, and programming tools that makes it, make it easier to type with um, JavaScript create JavaScript code. Uh, there's stuff like SurveyJS. Um, if you want to create a survey with questions, etc., this is basically a library that allows you to do something very simply. Uh, you, you type in the questions and it displays them uh, without you having to worry about code and, and so forth. And there's also something called frameworks. We're going to talk a little bit more about frameworks in uh, a later slide, but the frameworks are actually a whole, uh, we can say this way, they're applications develop in JavaScript entirely, which um, allows you to do some very cool stuff. Uh, for example, those single uh, pages that you see, those long pages, so which you, you can interact with, with, with uh, without never leaving the application, those are usually um, created with something like uh, AngularJS, Vue.js, React.js. Those are all JavaScript frameworks, uh, which you can also use in your uh, front-end applications. So, um, Having said that, um, the other cool thing about JavaScript, as you're going to see when we start the course, is that uh, you don't really need something additional to start writing JavaScript. Uh, in fact, you can write some JavaScript, HTML, and CSS code right now on your machine uh, and actually open it and see it in your browser without having to worry about, let's say, some configurations or some servers. Um, for example, if you had a PHP course, we would need a server to run the code that we run. But right now, our, let's say, server is actually the browser because the browser knows JavaScript, it knows CSS, it knows HTML. So um, we don't need to install any kind of software to actually start working with this uh, content. You also don't need some kind of uh, complicated ID. ID is the development tool that you're going to use. You've probably heard of uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, NetBeans, etc you can actually write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in your notepad. Um, 
you don't need anything else. Yes, there are tools that actually make it easier, uh, more beautiful, and um, you know, uh, more intuitive to work with, uh, like uh, Visual Studio Code or even Notepad++ is better than uh, the Notepad, the regular Notepad. Uh, but this is all we need to actually uh, work and uh, create applications. Of course, once the application is ready and you want to uh, serve it on the web so other people can actually interact with it, see what you did, then you're going to need a server and, and deploy that there. But this is something that you don't have to worry about because this is also um, almost automated, automated nowadays and can be done uh, easily. So um, you can create separate files for the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, as we said, they could be all in one place, actually, but this is not a good practice. We're also going to talk um, a lot about good practices when we start a course, uh, because what you're going to find out is that usually there are several multiple ways to do something, to write an application, to write a piece of code, but some ways are better than others. So uh, we're going to talk about good practices and, um, you know, it's not just making the code work. It's making the code work and making uh, and writing it easily so it could be maintained in the future and it could be easily work with by you or other people. So um, you can create different files and you can also load those libraries that we saw on the previous site from uh, CDN networks. Those are called distribution networks, which basically allows you to say, OK, you want to use this CSS file or this JavaScript file. Here's the link. Go take the file from the link and use it in your application. It's uh, basically that easy. And I also mentioned there are a lot of uh, examples. There are a lot of docu documentation uh, and resources that you can use, which means that if you have a problem at some point, uh, you can probably find the solution easily on the internet. It's one thing if you work with a cutting edge technology, because even if it's very good, uh, it, if, it has been, it, if it hasn't been around for a while, then probably if you run into a problem, there's not enough people who are into the same problem yet. So it's harder to find the solution. It's not impossible, it's just harder. But uh, HTML has been around from, uh, I'm going to lie to you, but it's from the 90s. So uh, it's uh, about 30 years. Um, CSS and JavaScript are also technologies that are um, a standard now. So if you have problems, especially in the beginning, it's uh, very probable that somebody else had the same problems so eventually they, um, they found a solution and it's going to be easier for you to work and find the same uh, solution. Um, excluding the fact that you had the course and instructor that you can ask questions about, et cetera. Um, so this part that we talked about so far is the introduction part of the course. And um, the final goal of the course for you is to get a certificate on JavaScript. The JavaScript exam in itself is going to contain stuff like HTML and CSS, not into big detail, but they're also relatively easier compared to JavaScript. Uh, so our main objective is going to be for you to get enough knowledge and um, for you to feel comfortable enough to write JavaScript code and eventually take that exam, which is going to bring you a certificate, which you can then use in your CVs, uh, et cetera. Um, once you do that, of course, as I said, those are the building blocks of the, uh, the internet. Those are the building blocks of web applications. Uh, this is just opening the door for you to continue from there and decide whether you want to learn more about the backend, which is something that we almost didn't mention here, or you want to focus more on the front end. And um, if you decide to stay on the front end, you can explore some frameworks that I already mentioned. Uh, you've probably heard the names of AngularJS, ReactJS, Vue.js. Those are progressive frameworks that actually uh, make it much more easier for you to build user interfaces and create applications uh, that use uh, JavaScript. They are actually uh, written in JavaScript, although they have some additional features, some additional languages that they use. Uh, they also move a little bit more into the advanced um, applications as they have uh, configuration files, uh, servers, et cetera, something that we um, said it's not present in the vanilla JavaScript, right? And their idea is uh, that they are based on creating components that you can then use, uh, reuse in your application. Uh, what does that mean? That means that let's say uh, it's a very simple example, but let's say you have a button. Uh, it's very unlikely that you're going to have just one button in your application, right? You're going, you're going to have multiple buttons on multiple places doing 
different things. So uh, the idea of those frameworks are to encapsulate the logic of what a button does into a component. And then you can reuse that piece of code in uh, various places in your application. And they're very good in doing that. Uh, so um, that will be one way for you to create your path uh, traveling down the front end programming um, if you decide to do so. Um, and uh, the other good thing that they do is that um, right now, if you want to create a web application, that's one thing. Uh, but if you want to create a mobile app, for example, that's uh, almost entirely different code base. So you, you, you need to know in some cases, even different languages and different technologies to do both. But those frameworks, for example, there's something that's called React Native or Vue Native. Those are frameworks that allow you to uh, have almost the same code base for a mobile application and a web application. So uh, you write the code and you say, okay, here I want you to render a website in the browser. And there I want you to render that same content, that same application in a web um, Android or um, Apple device, etc. So uh, this is, let's say, the next level. And uh, depending on how fast we can go to the material and uh, how quickly you can feel comfortable writing JavaScript and uh, HTML and CSS, we can eventually um, dive a little bit into, let's say, Vue.js, which is my favorite framework, or we can talk about any of the others. Um, and in conclusion, I'm going to say this. I showed the big picture in the beginning, which had the back end, the front end, something in between database. Um, and in today's world, even if you decide, decide OK, I want to be a front end developer, or I, I want to be a back end developer, you need to be aware of the other components. And you need to know at least a little bit of what they do and how they work. And what's valued most in uh, today's world is something that's called full stack developer. That's a person who basically understands um, all the components of the application. And why is this important? It's important because um, if you only know to do one part of the application, you're as good as one third or one fourth of everything that's, uh, that's going on. And people who can do it all, you know, naturally, they're um, more desirable in a team because they can uh, fit in multiple hats into different things. Uh, but the good thing about JavaScript is that, as I said, there are now frameworks that you can use. And those frameworks actually have stuff like Node.js, which you can use on the server and create a full stack application just using JavaScript, for example. Even if you don't want to be a full stack JavaScript developer, uh, as I said, even if you go into the back end, for example, I used to consider myself a back end developer for a long time before I had to accept that, uh, you know, now everything full stack. I used to do a lot of PHP coding, but even in the PHP world, I still needed to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to basically render the content that I did with the PHP to the user. So no matter what path you choose to, uh, to follow, as I said, those three uh, specific um, technologies, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, they will be there. So um, this is another reason that this course is uh, perfect for you if you're just starting up, because they will not only um, get you familiarized with the IT technologies used behind them, they will also be the building blocks for uh, the programming languages. So you're going to learn stuff like variables, loops, if statements, etc. And they're used in any language. So um, even if you go through this course in, and you decide, OK, that's not so interesting to me. I want to do a backend or something. Then the transition, transition for you is going to be much more easier because you're going to have those building blocks. You're going to have this beginning in the um, uh, programming world that's going to allow you to jump easily into something else. Um, and the more languages you learn, as I said, uh, it's, it's a process. Um, the easier it gets to jump into something new and um, create application in a language that uh, you haven't seen so far. So uh, that's pretty much it. As I said, it's a very high level overview, uh, but that's actually good for um, introductory course. And there's no requirements for you to have any previous knowledge to start this. We're going to teach you from the scratch. And from there, you can um, first, of course, get the certificate, because that's always useful. And then you can decide whether you want to dive deeper into this field or move into backend or another direction. Um, so that's it for me. Um, I'm going to browse to uh, the questions right now.
Uh, hello, I'm 17 years old and I have no experience. I want to continue uh, career in IT. Can I take part, uh, part in this courses? I think I already answered this. Definitely, this course is for you because we're going to start from scratch. And um, also, let me say that compared to uh, taking another course, uh, let's say backend, this could be, I would say, probably a little bit easier to do it because um, I mentioned you don't need some uh, complicated configurations in the beginning. You don't need servers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're probably going to download a uh, Visual Studio Code or Notepad++, which is going to make it easier to, to, to write uh, and create files. But other than that, we can just start uh, writing code and displaying it in the browser. So um, just to, to stress that one more time, I definitely recommend this course, even if you have uh, no um, no experience. Um, hello, PHP is kind of a dead language. And what is your opinion about that? OK, so um, PHP was my first language. So I, you can say I have a soft spot for it. Um, but my opinion is that nowadays uh, it doesn't really, well, it's not like it doesn't matter what you have in the back end. Uh, but what uh, the important part is, is how you present your application to the client and how does it look um, when it gets, gets into the browser or when it gets uh, to your mobile application. Um, so um, PHP could be that, but it's still widely used because even if it's not so popular nowadays, there are a lot of applications that still exist. Um, and also the other benefit of PHP is that you can create something like API uh, and then expose that API, consume it using Vue.js, React.js, et cetera. Um, and compared to some other languages, I would say it's uh, relatively easy to learn. Uh, that's a course uh, focus on another course. I might also, as I said, I'm also teaching PHP course, um, but if uh, it's also going to be introductory course. So um, the same thing stands for that course as well. Even if you've never done some programming, you can start with PHP. If you like it, that's fine. You can continue developing in the same direction. If not, you can then choose to um, switch into something else. And that transition is going to be easier for you because uh, you already have the basis. You have the knowledge to, um, to make it easier for you in the next course. Uh, what will be the main focus in the front end course? I think the presentation uh, basically nailed that down. We're going to start briefly with HTML and CSS, and then it's going to be almost entirely JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript with some, uh, you know, references to libraries, etc. Uh, the frameworks that I mentioned, they're pro also going to be uh, there, but probably just at the very end of the course, just to mention them, just to give you the uh, option to uh, move. Uh, to them if you decide to, uh, but expect mostly uh, JavaScript with a little bit of HTML and a little bit of CSS. Um, hi, is it necessary to add my photo to the CV? Um, I can answer that. Um, it's very nice to do so uh, because it shows, um, um, it creates a more personal approach to whoever is reading the CV. And that's something that I do a lot. I read a lot of C CVs. I have to uh, basically value them. Uh, so it, it's not necessarily the more you have, the better, but the picture is one thing that uh, you'll probably like to, to put in there. Yes. Uh, okay. Can you give me a link where I can apply to this course? Um, I have to answer. Um, I have to ask uh, exactly where the link is because I don't have it ready. So I'm going to leave this question open and somebody from the uh, admin team is going to help you in a little bit. Uh, when will we start coding and what will we create on the course using languages as what Mary is talking about? Um, okay, so something that I didn't mention. Uh, we're going to start coding from day one. Uh, we're going to open, let's say, Notepad++ or something, and we're going to create some uh, HTML, probably some CSS and display it in the browser. So uh, coding definitely from day one, which is uh, 11th of January. I'm not exactly sure about the date, but it's uh, mid-January, a little bit before that. Um, so um, what exactly are we going to do the course? That's something that I didn't mention, but um, I'm really focused on hands-on experience. So today was just slides, of course, because uh, this is introductory, but um, if you don't write some code, like if you don't sit in front of the keyboard and type some characters into 
um, your ID, then you're not going to learn much because even if I, let's say, um, if I want to show you something and I write the code on the screen, uh, it's going to look easier for you because assumingly I know what I'm doing and uh, I don't make many mistakes. I know what functions to use, etc. If you sit down and try to do the exact same thing that I did, then uh, you run into some problems because it doesn't come naturally for you. And th this is the whole point of this course to, to teach you how to do it, right? Uh, so um, the approach that I like is show you some um, slides with the idea of that we're going, the concept that we're going to be uh, talking about this day, and then do a lot of um, a lot of exercises, a lot of labs, a lot of um, uh, coding that's actually going to give you hands-on experience. Um, that is actually not what uh, the exam is going to be because, as you know, the exam is going to be some questions, uh, answer this, there's ABC, or um, type something in that field, etc. cetera. Um, and this is not exactly how developing actually works because um, developing, you always have the Google, you always have your resources. You, if you have a problem, you can check something online, find the solution there. So um, I will keep in mind while we are teaching the course that you will have to take the exam. So when there's some piece of information that I deem important and that's probably something that could pop up in a question, I'll make, I'll make sure to, to stress that. I'll do my best to point you in the, those directions. But other than that, and this is as a recruiter of uh, somebody who, who looks into CVs, et cetera, um, I value more uh, if you can show me a piece of code, something that you've rolled, um, you know, hands-on experience instead of just, um, you know, certificate that says, okay, this person knows a bunch of stuff. So yeah, expect a lot of a lot of coding from day one. Um, that's that's the short answer to to your question. Uh, we will be uh, we will be able to choose between Vue, Angular, or React, and what time will be set for them. Um, the answer here is, I would say no, uh, because as I said, this is introductory course. Uh, those three frameworks, Vue, Angular, and React, they, they are all using JavaScript so uh, in their core. So if you want to work with them, you would need to know JavaScript. If you already know JavaScript, I'm not saying this course is not going to be interesting for you. you you're probably going to learn some new things and at least get the certificate. Uh, but what we're going to do is after we finish with JavaScript, which in the 40 hours that we have uh, devoted to, to the course will be just enough uh, to do it on time, uh, we'll probably just have one or two sessions to show you what the next step is, which is Vue, Angular, or React, and uh, how you can use them. But they will be just uh, briefly academically mentioned, but we're not going to do much with them uh, that will be something for a different course, definitely not doable in the 40 hours that we have um, for this one. Uh, okay, next question. Yeah, I've been using Visual Studio and some blind text with Notepad. I do want to get some knowledge because I'm uh, really interested. I would like to see some new areas, but I don't want to do the same thing. They do like calculators and blank websites. Um, okay, so this is basically um, the type of exercise that we're going to do. Um, yes, and I would agree some of the courses have the same stuff over and over again, um, but it's really up to you uh, because, uh, as I said, for me, it's important for you to write some code. So let's say I give you an assignment or a lab that's supposed to test something, arrays. We're going to find out what arrays are, right? So I will have you to do, it's not going to be calculator, but it could be something similar, something that you've done in the past. Um, if that's boring to you, I'm totally fine with you picking something else, uh, let's say something that's useful for you, uh, and then developing that. Um, I can give you an example. When I was teaching one of the courses, uh, they had uh, this project that you had to do. It had a very good definition, but I went to the uh, lecturer and asked, uh, can I do this project, which is something that's going to be useful for me, uh, which was a time tra tracking application, uh, which basically tells you what you did all day and the, the, does some graphs and stuff. He said, yeah, this is going to cover all the material that we did. So go ahead and do that. I did it. I still use it to this day. Uh, so you have the freedom to, to do something different if you think that um, the regular exercises are, are boring. Uh, after the course, we will be able to start working as a junior developer. Um, I would say that 40 hours is 
actually I had that in the slides, it's just scratching the surface, surface right? Uh, but you would have, um, depending on the position, uh, as long as you have somebody to take, take you under their wing, uh, you would have enough knowledge to be drawing to a real life application. Uh, you would probably need to um, at least take some other courses, if, even if they're on the same topic. Uh, you would probably need to get familiarized more with um, some of the frameworks, et cetera. Uh, but let's say you would be uh, ready to start thinking about it. You would probably need a couple more courses at least, uh, but this, this will be a very solid base. This will be a very uh, good way for you to, to, to start your journey. Thank you. Thank you as well. Um, and then one last question. Maybe it is a question for organizers, but I want to know if it's being abroad could cause any problem during the course since it will be online, as you said. Well, we're all online. Right now I'm at home. I'm also online. You know what the situation is around the world. So I don't think you should be bothered. All you need to do is a uh, relatively stable uh, internet connection uh, because if you cannot connect to the sessions, then uh, you know, uh, I think there will be recordings. You'll be able to watch them later. But of course, it will be better for you to be live and be uh, able to ask questions as you're doing right now. Uh, so being abroad, definitely not a problem. Just uh, make sure you have this internet connection. Everything else uh, we should be able to take care about. What will be the time schedule? I think the schedule is already on the website. Um, there's actually two courses for JavaScript. Um, one is going to be Monday and Wednesday. The other one is going to be Tuesday and Thursday because I think there's a lot of people interested in this. So, uh, you know, we'll try to separate you into two groups uh, so you can have more time to ask questions and I have more time to, to answer them. Uh, the schedule itself, as I said on the website, maybe <laughs> Nikki can help me a little bit here and tell me exactly when the course starts and uh, what you can expect uh, as, as dates, sessions, etc. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Settlemir.